the uh, name Marshall Applewhite. Marshall Applewhite. According to his um, tape recording, which he circulated among his uh, followers, he said the world was going to be recycled. So it was time for them to leave. Anybody who wants to be saved, anybody who wants to enter paradise, should follow him. That was his power. And you know what happened? Because they believed that the world was coming to an end, they decided to quickly leave before the vote, according to his own language, before the world is recycled. So that you don't, you don't get recycled, you know, part of the, in the recycling that is going to take place. So these people, they gather in their place of worship, they rented a very large, you know, uh, apartment, rooms and beds and everything who are there. And on March 20, 1997, this group of people decided that they were going to heaven. They were going to leave the rest of us and go to paradise. And you know how? The fact that the way to get to paradise is to kill themselves. So they took, all of them, they slept on the bed and took a poisonous substance. substance and they died. All of them, about 37 of them, died in that apartment. And when they were going, you know what they had on them? They had their passports, with which they are going to enter paradise. They had their passports. You know, this is the passport. They, had they also had BTA with them. Basically, no BTA, basic transports. Allowance that travelers take along with their traveling. And that was what they had. Because they said those are what will they are going to pay to enter the paradise. This is their idea of paradise. And again, if you look at the mainstream Christian you know, Christianity, you find out that their own perception of paradise also is something that is quite different from the perception of the Muslims concerning paradise. Of course, the mainstream Christianity believe that the best thing that is going to happen to every one of us, if you happen to be righteous in this world, is that in paradise you just simply become an angel. So you just simply become an angel, you become angelic. So there will, there will be no need for you to be you know, troubled by these physical demands and pleasures. Is this what the Muslim believe concerning paradise? You will find out that the belief of the Muslim, you know, quite differ from many of the other people's beliefs concerning paradise. There, there are some, you know, religion, those who even believe that, okay, you make it there, every religion has their own paradise. The Christian they have paradise, uh, Taoism, they have paradise, Buddhists, they have their own paradise, everybody with their own kind of paradise. So when you die, if you are righteous as a Christian, you go to Christian paradise. If you are righteous as a Muslim, you go to Muslim paradise. You know, this is the belief of something in the religion. And some said, after some time, if you enter paradise, you come back to the world, and you come back and live again, and you go back to paradise again. This is the idea that many people have concerning paradise. So what is the idea of paradise in Islam? What is the correct belief concerning paradise in Islam? This is the object of our discussion today, inshallah. And I've determined a couple of topics that were good questions that I'm going to answer each other today. The first one is what is agenda. The second one is what is the correct Muslim belief concerning agenda. The third question we're going to answer today, inshallah, hoping that time will permit us, is does agenda exist at the moment? As we are speaking, does agenda exist? Then the next thing we're going to try to solve is if Algeria exists, where is it located? Where is Algeria? Then the next thing we are going to do is Algeria that we are going to enter on the day of Kiyama, the Allah and me and you among those who enter Algeria. Is it the same one that Nabi Adam alayhi salatu wasalam entered? Is it the same one or a different one? 
This is part of what we're going to, you know, question we're going to answer today. And the last point we're going to be talking about is if we enter as a gentleman, we will find that there are relationships, there are instances in the Quran and in the hadith of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you find the people of Al Jannah conversing, talking to one another. In what language would they be talking? In what language would the people of Allah be talking? So these are some of the things that we're going to, you know, be looking at, inshallah. Then what is Al Jannah? So this is the first thing we're going to talk about. What is Al Jannah? In Arabic, usually when the scholars take a particular issue like that and they are going to they ask the question of what is a part, the meaning of a particular thing. They look at it from two perspectives, both in its linguistic meaning as well as in its technical meaning. So we are going to do that as well, inshallah. The first thing is that what is the linguistic you know, meaning of al -Jana? In Arabic lexicon, the word al refers to al-Bustan. Al-Bustan. Al-Bustan means an orchard or a garden, simply. That is the meaning of Al-Bustan. And this is why the Arabs, whenever they, you know, they want to refer to a garden filled with palm trees, they call it Jannah. They call it, they call it Jannah. So if you look at many of the Qawmuz, many of the Arabic dictionary, you find out that definitely this is how they define you know, Al Jannah to be a garden filled with trees, filled with trees. So, but in the technical, in you know, parlance, Al Jannah is generally a name that is applied to that abode which Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has prepared for those who obey Him in this world, and it includes many kind of comforts and pleasures and coolness of the eyes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for those who enter it. So this essentially is what Al Jannah is in definition in terms of both its technical as well as linguistic meaning. Then what place does Al Jannah occupy in the belief system of Muslim? What is the place of Al Jannah in our belief as Muslim? The first thing we should know is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it incumbent upon every Muslim to believe in the existence of Al Jannah that there is a, an abode that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to, with which Allah is going to reward whoever made the right choice in this world. The right choice meaning following, obeying the commands of Allah. And upon the direction as well as the manhaj of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So whoever does this, we get Al Jannah as a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala insha'Allah. And this is why whoever in Islam, whoever disbelieves in the existence of Al Jannah completely nullifies his own faith as Muslim. So meaning that this is how crucial the belief of Al-Jannah is in our belief system as Muslim. It's such that whoever disbelieves in Al-Jannah becomes a kafir. Whoever disbelieves in Al-Jannah becomes a kafir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, Quran chapter 2 verse 23, Allah says, uh, chapter 2 to uh, verse 2 to 3, Allah says, ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين. Allah says this is the book whereof there is no doubt a guidance to those who are al-mutakul, those who fear Allah, those who are pious. And Allah says, who are these who are pious? Allah now define what made them pious. الذين يؤمنون بالغيب. Meaning that their belief in the غيب. Their belief in the unseen is part of what made them to be pious, part of what made them to be Muslim. So essentially, 
our being the Muslim is defined by our belief in al ghaib in the unseen. And there are so many things that are unseen that we must believe. Allah is part of it. Allah is part of the life is unseen. At least we can see Allah in this world until the day of Qiyam. There are texts of the Quran and the Hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that are firm that we are going to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our eyes. May Allah count us among those who will see Allah. Because Allah is going to prevent the kuffar from seeing him on the day of Qiyam. So, belief in the unseen is part of what makes a Muslim a Muslim. And part of the unsaint that we must believe is Al-Jannah. And it includes other things, Hellfire, Sirat, the Day of Judgment, and the rest of the way that we must believe in. Then Allah says in another verse of the Quran, Surah Al-Mariyah, Quran chapter 19, verse 61. Allah says, Jannat al-Adnillati wa'ad al-Rahman al-Ibadah جنات عدن التي وعد الرحمن عباده بالغير إنه كان وعده معتيا الله سبحانه وتعالى سيس جنات عدن التي وعد الرحمن عباده the jannah that Allah the Rahman has promised his slave in the unseen this verse establishes the fact that Jannah that Allah has prepared and has promised the righteous servants of East is still unseen. But as Muslims, we must believe in the existence of Al Jannah. And you, will, you look at the hadith of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will find many texts of the hadith showing and affirming the existence of Al Jannah. And also, you know, underlining the fact that. Our faith in its existence is crucial to our success in this life and in the, in the hereafter. For instance, in a hadith that is reported by Abdullah ibn Abbas, عنهما, he mentioned that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he woke up in the middle of the night, he used to say some words, he used to repeat some words. And Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu had related those words that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to repeat when he wakes up in the middle of the night. He said the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will say, Allahumma laka alhamdu anta nuru samarawati wal ard. O Allah, to you be the praise. You are the light of the heavens and the earth. Wa laka alhamdu anta alqayyamu samarawati wal ard. And wa laka alhamdu. To you be praise, O Allah. You are the supporter of the heavens and the earth. وَلَكَ الْحَمْدُ أَنْتَ رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا فِيهِنَّا To you be praise. To you be the praise. أَنْتَ رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ You are the Lord of the heavens and the earth. وَمَا فِيهِنَّا And all that is within, that is in them. And the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa continues, أَنْتَ الْحَقِّ وَوَعَدُكَ حَقِّ you are true, and your promise is true. وَقَوْلُكَ الْحَقِّ وَقَوْلُكَ الْحَقِّ And your words are true. وَلِقَوْكَ حَقِّ Meeting with you is true. There is a reality to it. وَالْجَنَّةُ حَقِّ And al-jannah is a reality. It's true. It will come to pass. People who are righteous will enter paradise as Allah has promised. وَالْنَارُ حَقِّ and her fire through is true. Whoever makes the wrong choice in this world will enter her fire as Allah has promised. This will come to pass. And the Messenger of Allah continued, was to have. And the hour of Qiyamah is true. It will come to pass. Allahumma laka aslam tu. O Allah, it's to you I submit. Wa bika amantu. And it is in you I believe. وَعَلَيْكَ تَوَقَلْتُ And it is on you I depend. I put my trust. وَإِلَيْكَ أَلَمْتُ And it is to you I repent. وَبِكَ خَاصَمْتُ And it is by you I 
You know, I, I argue. Why later I come to? I need to see your judgment that I turn to. Forgive me those things that I've gone by and the ones that will come later. Where I learn to and the sins that I've committed openly. Was wrong to and the ones that I've committed secretly. Anta ilahi. You are my Allah, my God. La ilaha illa anta. These are the statements that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he wakes up in the middle of the night, these are the statements he repeats. Praise in the statement, you find that Allah's, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirming that Al Jannah is true. And people's entrance, entering Al Jannah on the day of Qiyamah, will come to pass. And in another hadith, a variant of the hadith, this one is reported by Ubada ibn Ashani, رضي الله عنه. He said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say this word. He said, مَنْ قَالَ أَشْهَدُ اللَّهِ إِلَهَا إِلَّا أَطِيلُ اللَّهِ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَا Whoever bears witness, there is none worthy of worship except Allah. Wahda, he is alone. La sharika la. He does not have any associates. Wa anna Muhammad an abduhu wa rasuluhu. And that Muhammad is his messenger. Abduhu is his slave and messenger. Wa anna Isa abdullah. And he also bears with nada. Nabi Isa alayhi salam is... The Nabi of Allah. Wa ana Isa Abdullah. That is the slave of Allah. Wa ana Ammati. And the son of the slave woman of Allah. Alqa kalib. Wa kalimatu alqaha ila Maryam. And the word that he cast into Maryam. Wa rukumin. And the spirit from him. Wa ana al-jannat al-haqq. And that person also testifies that al-jannat is true. That person also testifies that Al-Jannah is true. وَأَنَّ النَّارَ حَقَّوْا And that fire is also true. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, whoever testifies to this and says this word, أَدْخَلَهُ اللَّهُ مِنْ عَيَّ بِوَادِ الْجَنَّةِ الثَّمَانِ يَشَعَ Allah Akbar. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever says this word, and believe in it, Allah is going to admit him into paradise from whichever of the eight gates that leads to paradise that he likes. Allah is going to admit him to paradise from whichever of the eight gates of paradise that he chooses. So meaning that affirming the existence of Al-Jannah is itself a reason for us to enter Al-Jannah. Because our faith as Muslims will not be complete if we do not believe in the existence of Al-Jannah. So this is the first thing. The second thing is Al-Jannah according to the belief of Muslims that the scholars of Islam have preserved for us in the books of Akhida and other books that the scholars have in origin, particularly in the book known as Akhida to Asharafiya, otherwise popularly known as Akhida to Tahariya. It is a form there, the book, you know, compiled the basic an authentic belief that a Muslim must not do without. Essentially, it contains the beliefs, things that a Muslim must believe for his belief, aqidah, to be salim, to be correct. And part of what is in that book as aqidah of Ahlu Sunnah, uh, the Muslim, is that Al Jannah. Makhluk al Jannah wa Nar Makhlukatan. Al Jannah wa Nar Makhlukatan. And that is Al Jannah and Hellfire. They are both creatures of Allah. 
They are creations of Allah. Allah has created both of them. And essentially you will see all the attributes of creation in them. Allah speaks to them. They also converse with Allah. Inshallah we will come back to that. Because the question might be, how can Al-Jannah be talking? And how can Hellfire also be talking? Are they human? Because in our being, we think that it's only human being that speaks, or perhaps angels that speak, or perhaps the jinn, only the jinns that speak. All of these people, all of these creatures of Allah, they are the only ones that speak. So how can Al-Jannah speak intelligently? How can Hellfire also speak intelligently? You know. But essentially, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes for us as our believers Muslims that Al-Jannah as well as Hellfire, they are creatures of Allah. Allah has created them. There's a verse in the Quran that points to that. In Surah al Imran, Quran chapter 3, verse 133, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah says, Allah says, and haste or rush or compete for the forgiveness from your Lord was Jannah and also haste and complete for Al Jannah. Ardu as Sanawat wal Ard. The wheat of that Al Jannah is the wheat of Sanawat wal Ard. All of the heavens and all of the earth put together. If you combine them together, it is the wheat of Al Jannah. Or that the Allah say it has been prepared. For the Muttaqun. Allah has prepared the Al Jannah for the Muttaqun. So the fact that Allah SWT refers to Al Jannah as something that He has prepared is an indication of the fact that Allah SWT, you know, created you know, Al Jannah and is part of the creator of uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And if you look at the hadiths of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one of one which is reported by Abu Huraira, رضي الله عنه, he said, اختصمت, اختصمت الجنة والنار إلى ربهما. Al Jannah and Hellfire, both of them were arguing in the presence of Allah. Al Jannah and Hellfire, both of them arguing in the presence of Allah. فقال Al Jannah, Al Jannah said, يا رب, oh my Lord, ما لها لا يدخلها إلا الضعفاء إلا الضعفاء الناس. Why is it that the people that will enter me are only the weak ones? The weak ones. They are the only people that will enter me. وقال تنا and Hellfire said يعني أريد بالمتكبرين it is me that will inherit the haughty and the arrogant and the great people. I am the one that will inherit them. This is what Hellfire is saying. So meaning that the people of paradise are not the people who are unassuming, they are not, they are meek, they are gentle, they are unassuming when they are in the crowd, you hardly notice them. These are some of the attributes of the people of paradise. But inshallah, you will hear more of the attributes of the people of paradise in this session, inshallah. And the hellfire is also mentioned that the people that he is going to, it is he, he is going to inherit. Sorry, I had a problem of which pronoun should I use for hellfire, each or he. But this is English. Anyway, so, Father Allah Ta'ala, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala address both of them, Al Jannah and Nar, the hellfire. Allah says to Al Jannah first, Anti Rahmati, you are my mercy. You are my mercy. 
And Allah addressed hellfire. Anti Adabi, you are my punishment. Usibu biki man asha. I will inflict you upon anyone I wish, anyone I like. Walikulli wahidati min kumma min uha. And each one of you, I am going to fill you. I'm going to fill each one of you. Al Jannah will be filled, and Allah will fill her by as well. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَذْلِمُ مِنْ خَلْقِ أَحَدًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to be unjust to anyone. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said on the day of Qiyamah whenever Allah they are bringing people into hellfire in throngs, in groups as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the people of, you know, the, the kuffar will be driven to hellfire. Ila jahannam azumara. They are going to be driven in groups. And when each group enter, you know, the way they say it, they will just completely become, you know, part of our family. You know, this is what is going to happen to them. And another group will be brought. It will swallow them. Another group will be brought to swallow them. And Allah will be asking hellfire, are you full? And hellfire will be, uh, will be asking, are there more? Are you full, are there more? And this is what hellfire is going to be asking Allah. Until, according to the hadith of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah will place his foot on hellfire. And it will shrink. Hellfire will shrink. And hellfire will say, cut, cut, cut. He said, it's okay, it's enough, it's enough, it's enough. And this is what is going to happen. And this is from, Wallahi, this is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because Allah has not, has not left us you know, in the dark about anything that is going to happen to us. What is going to happen to you at the point of death, it is clear to you. What you are supposed to say at the point of death, you have been told. When you are put in the grave, Allah has not left you in the dark. Regarding what you are going to experience there, this is from His mercy. You have been told. You are going to be questioned in the grave. They told you the questions that I'm going to ask you. And they also give you the answers. This is from the mercy of Allah. On the day of Qiyamah, everything from the minute detail of what is going to transpire on the day of judgment, the sirat that are going to pass through, the nature of the, the, the sirat, and al jannah the nature of the place, and Hellfire, the nature of the place. All of these are clear. This is from the mercy of Allah. So that it becomes easy for us to prepare and make the right choice here in this world. If you are to ask other people, other than Muslim, they don't have this kind of information that we have. They don't have all the information that we have. If you are to ask a Christian what will happen to you after death, the best answer that he is likely to give you is going to sleep on the chest of Jesus. <laughs> that is the best answer he is going to give you. Tell us why I guess you did, that's all. Or maybe one of them will say, okay, he's on the right hand of, right hand of Jesus or somewhere. This is the best. Even the answer, they don't have any proof for it. The answer that I will give you, they don't have any proof for it. But you have proof from your Lord and from the messenger of your Lord concerning all the information that you require. So this is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this ummah. And from the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I mean the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Hellfire and, and Paradise, both of them were arguing in the presence of Allah. So you begin to wonder, how can they be arguing? What kind of language were they speaking to each other? What, what kind of language were they speaking with Allah? You know. And essentially, what we should realize as Muslims is that all creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
Allah has given whoever, whichever one of them, Allah decides to give the ability to speak. Allah gives them. Allah gives them the ability to speak. And that is why on the day of Kiyama, on the day of Kiyama, things that used not to speak before will speak. Things that used not to speak before, that you never knew could speak, will speak on the day of judgment. And that's where your hand will speak on that day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, on that day, Allah is going to seal the news. وَيْكَلِّمُونَ I be him. And their hand will speak. And their legs will speak on that day. So if all of these are going to happen, it means that there is none of the creatures of Allah that Allah, if Allah wants them to speak, that will not speak. And they will speak in the language that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes and chooses for them to speak. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understands all language because it's the origin of all language. And it's the origin of every individual that speaks all language. So, and if you look at the verses of the Quran, you will see many references like this, indicating that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that don't think that you are you are the only, you know, uh, uh, you human being, you are the only one that can speak. You remember the story of Nabi Sulaiman Ali Salatu Wasalam when he was passing, and Allah gave him the, the ability to hear what the ants were talking. When the, the, the chief Namu was selling the rice, enter your homes so that Suleiman will not trample upon you and his, and his army. And Suleiman had, it, had the voice, had what he was saying. This is from the, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So who am I for? Without that, whoever thought the ants were speaking? Who could even hear that they were speaking? Who could hear the... I have never seen any, any, you know, equipment with which to pick the language of ants. I have never seen it. I don't know whether it exists. To pick the language of ants, how they speak to one another. At least you can hear the mooing of cows. You can hear the barking of dogs. You can hear the crowing of chickens and birds. But what about ants? But they speak, as Allah mentioned to us in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa says in the Quran, وَمَا مِنْ دَعْبَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا طَاهِرِ يَتِيرُ بِجَنَّهَيْ إِلَّا أُمَمٌ أَمْثَالُكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَا مِنْ دَعْبَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ There is no animal on the surface of the earth. وَلَا طَعِرْ يَتِيرُ بِجَنَّهَيْهِ And there is no bird flying with, it, with their wings. إِلَّا أُمَّمٌ أَمْثَالُكُمْ Except that they are society like you. They are communities like you. مَا فَرَطْنَا فِي الْكِتَابِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ We are not left anything out from this book. ثُمَّ إِلَى رَبِّهِمْ يُحْشَرُونَ and it is unto your Lord, their Lord, that they are going to be resurrected. And Allah subhanahu wa says, to sab bihu lahu samawa, to sab wal ard. And the heavens, the seven heavens, they do tasbih for Allah. And the earth do tasbih for Allah. Have you ever had the tasbih of heaven? And the earth, as you are walking, they are doing tasbih. Have you had the tasbih of the earth? But Allah says they are talking. So, it should not be a surprise that al Jannah and Hellfire talked to Allah and Allah also spoke to them. So these are some of the beliefs of Ahlul Sunnah and Jama'ah and the beliefs of mainstream Islam. Of course you can see some variants, some Muslims, they have variants, we are going to come to that inshallah. You will see there are discrepancies in their own belief concerning you know, some of these things that we are mentioning. Now the next question we intend to ask If You ask us to believe In Al-Jannah And that it is crucial To us being Muslim Then does paradise exist as we are speaking Does Al-Jannah exist as we are speaking The correct belief Among the Ahl-Sunnah wa Jama'ah 
And whoever wants to, you know, uh, confirm that can go back and read Akira to Tahawiyah. There's a consensus of Ahlul Sunnah wa Jamaah that paradise and hellfire has been created. Paradise and hellfire have already been created and they are in existence as we are speaking. This is the belief of Ahlul Sunnah wa Jamaah. And this belief is not taken from the hair. It is not something that is from, you know, um, wishful thinking. The Ahlu Sunnah wa Jama, whatever Ahlu Sunnah wa Jama base they believe on, it is based on evidence, authentic evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, what are some of the evidences indicating that paradise currently exists? What are those evidences? We look at the Quran and the Hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In the verse of the Quran, in Surah Al-Hadith, Quran chapter 57, verse 21, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Sabiku ila magfiratin min rabbikum wa jannatin arduwa ka ardi samaa ka ardi samaa wa al-ardu iddat lilladina amanu billahi wa rusuli وعدت للذين آمنوا بالله ورسله ذلك فضل الله يؤتيه من يشاء والله ذو الفضل العظيم الله سبحانه وتعالى says سابقوا إلى مغفرة من ربكم race compete with one another إلى مغفرة من ربكم for the forgiveness from your Lord وَجَنَّاتٍ عَرْضُ وَكَعَرْضِ السَّنَاءِ And for Al-Jannah, the wheat of which is similar to the wheat of all the heavens and the earth. لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرُسُولِهِ And Allah ended up as said, أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّكِينَ Allah says, this Al-Jannah we are prepared for those who are pious. Those who are pious. So meaning that the word that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word that they would take in, meaning that Al-Jannah has already been prepared. It's something that has been prepared. So meaning that Al-Jannah already exists. And this matter is also further clarified by the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In a hadith that is reported by Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu, he said the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Lama khalaq Allahu al-jannata, qala al-jibreel, idhab fandur ilayha, fadhaaba fanadara ilayha thumma jaa, faqala ya rabb, wa'izzatik, لا يسمع بها أحد إلا دخلها نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم said when Allah created the Jannah when Allah created the Jannah قال لجبريل he said to جبريل اذهب فانظر إليها go and look at it go and look at the Jannah فذهب and جبريل went فنظر إليها and he looked at it, thumma jaha. Then he returned to Allah, faqala. And Jibreel said, Ya Rabbi, O oh my Lord, wa izzati, I swear by your majesty, la yasma'u ahad, la yasma'u ahad illa dakhalaha. There is no one who will hear about this father that will not enter this place. There is no one who will hear about this and we not what you have prepared here, there is no one who will hear it except that they will enter that place. They will do everything possible to enter it. This is the response of the brain. So the issue here, the point of evidence here, is the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, When Allah had created Al-Jannah. So meaning that Al-Jannah has already been created. 
Al Jannah has been created. If Al Jannah has not been created, where did Allah send Jibril to go and look? What did Jibril look? What did Jibril see? And he came back to report to Allah. And he came back to report to Allah that no one will hear about this place except that they will enter the paradise. So this hadith is also an evidence that Al Jannah already exists. Another evidence that also showed to us that Al Jannah already exists is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared a special kind of reward for the martyrs, for those who die in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And part of the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for them because of their sacrifice, sacrificing their soul in their life for the sake of Allah in jihad, jihad that is correct, not jihad based upon one's wings and like we already know, we have repeated it several times, we don't say a particular person is a Messiah except that Allah and his messenger has you know, called the person a Messiah. We can only hope because of the signs that we have seen that a person is a martyr. One of the students of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, his name is Mas'ud, once asked Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, he asked him concerning this verse of the Quran, Surah to Ali Muhammad, Quran chapter 3, verse 169. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَالِ بَلْ أَحْيَاهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ يُرْزَقُونَ Do not think about those who are killed in the way of Allah. Don't think that they are dead. Rather, they are Allah, they are Allah with their Lord. And Allah is providing for them, giving them provision. So Masoud said, he asks, he asks Abdullah to Masoud about the tafsir of this verse. And Abdullah ibn Masoud responded to him. You see this question he asked me, we also ask the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We also put the same question to the message of Allah. And he answered. And the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Arwahu hum fi jawfi qayyu khutri laha qanadil mu'allakatun bil arsh tasrahu min al-jannah haythu sa'ah haythu sha'ah ثم تأوي إلى تلك القنادير فاطلع إليهم ربهم طلاعة فقال هل تشتغون شيئا قالوا يا أي شيء نشتهي ونحن نصرع في الجنة حيث شئنا الله صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله عليه وسلم said the souls of the martyrs أرواحهم في جوف الطيب Allah has placed their soul inside green birds. Tori khudri. Green birds. Allah has placed their soul. Laha qanadil mu'alla qatul bil arsh. The nest of those birds. The nest is attached to something like chandeliers. Hung to the arsh, the throne of Allah. And they will fly from that place and they will go to Al Jannah. And they will fly about in paradise. This is what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. They will fly about in paradise and they will eat as they like in paradise. And they will return to that place. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah will ask them a question. Do you want something, any more thing for, for me to do for you? And those people, the martyrs, will reply, Are you ashamed of me? What else do we ask for? What else do we ask for? وَنَحْنُ وَنَسْرَحُ فِي الْجَنَّةِ Why do we roam about in Al-Jannah? حَيْثُ شَيْنَا Wherever we like. We are roaming about in paradise wherever we like. So if Al-Jannah has not been created, where are the Matthias going? Where are the Matthias going? So, this is another evidence to show that really, paradise has already been created. But you find that 
These are incontrovertible evidences. But there are some Muslim, some sects among the Muslims who believe that paradise has not been created. Paradise is yet to be created. Among them are the Mutazila. Are the Mutazila. And the Mutazila are, you know, one of the early sects in Islam. According to Stella, uh, it does a new, they went far off, they, you know, they, they, they turned away from the correct appeal of an Islam. So some of their belief, you know, contradict the correct belief in Islam. And according to the Tazila, there is one who believe that, you know, there is some Muslim believe that people who commit kabbalah, you know, great sins, they are some, some Muslims believe that they are Muslim, and those who commit, you know, um, uh, they, they are Muslim that they will enter paradise, and if Allah chooses, He might punish them before He brings them to paradise, and that. The Kufar, they are in Hellfire, they will be in Hellfire. But the Mutazira, there are those who believe that, you know, there's, there's this, this slogan, Manzila Tun Bain and Manzila Tain. This is their belief concerning part of their belief in the hereafter. That there is a medium point between Islam and Kufu. So, people who commit major sins, they are not Muslim, according to them, they are not Muslim and they are not Kufar. They are not Muslim and they are not Kufar. So they are in between. What do you call them? No name. On the day of Qiyam, their belief also is that those people who commit major sin, they will not enter paradise and they will not enter the fire. They will be at a place in between paradise and fire. These are not beliefs of Ahl al These are not beliefs. So this will cancel out. They said, they also believe that paradise has not been created yet. Paradise has not been created yet. They argue that how can paradise are created, how can paradise be created when the use for it is not yet time to use it. And Allah does not do things, you know, wastefully. So, according to the argument, if Allah has created paradise and it will be a waste, it will not be there, you know, lying fallow. Imagine that just this is their reasoning, the human reasoning they are using, applying their human reasoning to the workings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because normally under normal circumstance, if you build a house, if you build a house, however beautiful that house is, and you abandon it like that for let's say 50 years, what do you think will happen to that house? Usually the house is likely to become dilapidated. No matter how beautiful that you have created, I mean built the house. So, you didn't use it, nobody is using it, nobody is staying there. Eventually the house, you will see cracks, you know, the whole thing will be, the house will not be good again. This is the way they, they thought about the paradise of Allah. They said the paradise, it is since the people who are going to enter it, they are not yet ready to enter it. So it doesn't befit that Allah should create it yet. So this is their own argument. And the second argument they have concerning the fact that paradise should not have been created yet. So their own opinion, paradise is not created yet. It is when it is time that Allah wants to admit people to paradise that Allah is going to create it. So they also argue that if you say that paradise has been created, automatically paradise is at the end of the world paradise is going to also be destroyed as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Kullu illa wajha. everything will perish except Allah's face everything will perish except Allah's face this is the argument so if paradise is in existence mankind will die the jinn will die the entire world will also you know be pulverized the heaven also will be, will be turned to something else. And no 
even the angels also will be not existent and only Allah will remain. So they argue that it means that paradise also will come, will cease to exist at that time. This is the argument. So because of that, they said that paradise has not been in. You know, but the scholars of Islam have responded to them very, you know, um, convincingly and, you know, um, fitting, in a fitting way. And um, they said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the argument that paradise will come to, will cease to exist when the world comes to, to, to the end. It's a special argument. It's not a strong argument. In the sense that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will preserve whichever of his creation he chooses to preserve from, you know, perishing when, when he, you know, brings the world to an end. Allah preserve whichever he will. And there are evidences from the, from the Sunnah, from the text of the Sharia, that shows to us that there are certain things Allah is going to, you know, absorb from perishing. And part of it is the throne of Allah. Is a creature of Allah. The throne of Allah will not, there is no, no evidence whatsoever that shows that the throne of Allah will cease to exist at a point in time. So, this is, this is the, the own special argument. But the correct position among the Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah is that paradise currently exists. Paradise currently exists. Now, the next question that we should try to answer is if it exists, will it continue to exist? Meaning that will it be everlasting? Will the paradise be everlasting? You might, it might occur to your mind, why do we need to talk about this? Allah has mentioned that it is eternal. That paradise is eternal. So what's the point in talking about this again? But it is important that we talk about it because there are Muslims who believe that paradise will come to an end at a point in time. They believe that paradise will come to an end at a point in time. And you find this belief as a Mutazila. And don't even think that these Mutazila beliefs, they may not call themselves Mutazila anymore, but their beliefs still exist. The belief of Mutazila, you find people who have this kind of beliefs that are in some places in Iran, you know, bordering Iran and the rest of them like that. You know, this but this we can find people who still profess this kind of opinion that so the Mutazila they also believe that paradise will cease to exist at the point in time. And also the Jahmiya, they also believe that paradise will also cease to exist at the point in time. But the scholars of Al-Islam have responded to them, responded to them that no, paradise and hellfire will never at any point in time cease to exist because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly told us in the Quran and in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us in the hadith that they will remain extant, that means they will remain eternal. And this is the opinion of Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah. According to Imam al Bahawi, Rahimahullah, he said in his book, Aqidat al Tahawiyah, Wal Jannatu wal Nar, Wal Jannatu wal Nar Makhlukatan, La Tafniyan, Abalan, Wala Tabiyan, Wa Inna Allah Ta'ala, Khalaq al Jannata wal Nar, Qabla al Khalq, Wa Khalaq Lahuma Ahlan. فَمَنْ شَاءَ مِنْهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ فَضْلًا مِنْهُمْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ مِنْهُمْ إِلَى النَّارِ عَدْلًا مِنْهُمْ According to Imam al-Tahari said, Al-Jannah wa al-Nar, Paradise and Hellfire, they are creatures of Allah, مخلوق وطا, they were created by Allah. And they will never at any point in time cease to exist, nor will they pass away. They will not cease to exist and they will not pass away. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى خَلَقَ الْجَنَّةِ وَالنَّارَ قَبْلَ الْخَلِقِ Allah created paradise and hell before He created beings. He created paradise and hell before He created the beings. 
And he created people who populate both places. Whoever Allah chooses, whoever Allah likes amongst them, Ila al Jannah, Allah admits him to Al Jannah. Fadlan, as a favor from him. As a favor from him. Because no one can enter paradise by their deeds alone, except by Allah's favor, by Allah's mercy. And the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he himself mentioned that. That he himself cannot attain Al Jannah except that Allah covers him in his mercy. So if Allah, Allah's Messenger requires Allah's mercy to enter paradise, who else? Who else? So Imam al Tahari also said that, and whoever Allah wishes will go to a hellfire as a justice for me. Justice. Because there is no one. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, there is no one, no one who will enter hellfire except that he will know. Except that he realizes and he knows that there is no other abode that he deserves except hellfire. No one will enter hellfire except that he himself we acknowledge that there is nowhere that fits him that he deserves other than hellfire. There is no one. Even if you are to be given, judge yourself. Deliver, deliver judgment on yourself. The person is going to deliver the judgment on her father. May Allah save us from that. So, essentially, here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned to us that paradise will continue and we never come to an end as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another verse of the Quran, Jannah ta'adni mufattahatan lahum al-abwa muttaki'ina fiha yad'una fiha bifaqihatin kathiratin wa sharaab wa innahum qasiratun tarfi atarar wa hada ma tu'aduna li yawm al-hisab inna hada la ruzukuna ma lahu min nafar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this verse uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in Surah Al-Sawr, Quran chapter 38, verse 54. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Jannat adnin mufattaha talahum al-abwaar. This is the paradise that whose doors will be opened for them. Muttaqeen afiyya yajra'un afiyya bifaqiyya. Analyze that portion of it. Inna hadha. After those who enter paradise, Allah says, Inna hadha la rizukwana. This is our provision. This is what we have provided for you. Mana humin nafad, which we never finish. Which we never finish. Allah says, the pleasure and provision of paradise we never finish. So this is a pointer to the fact that Al Jannah will never come to an end at any point in time. And Allah SWT says, in another. Um, Verse of the Quran, this is Surah Al-Quran, Quran chapter 13, verse 35. Allah SWT says in Matalu Jannat al Latu Uddan al Muttaqoon, Uddan al Muttaqoon, Tajri bin Tajri al Ha, Ukuha, Da Ilu, Wadiluha. Allah SWT says the description of the community of paradise that we have prepared and promised for the pious in Muttaqoon, Tajri bin Tajri al Ha. Underneath it, the rivers flow. Allah says, Ukulha. It's provision. The imun is eternal. Its provision is eternal. And so it is shaped. So, these two verses of the Quran tell, tell us that paradise and its pleasures will never come to an end. This is the belief that Allah SWT has established for us in the Quran. And the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are many ahadith, many ahadith that affirms this beyond any kind of doubt. In fact, it is so clear that the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said on the day of Qiyamah, on the day of Qiyamah, you tell me 
Allah will command that death to some will be brought. Ta'ayat al kabshin amlaha. Like a lamb. You know a lamb. The people will slaughter during the layer. Death will be brought like that. For you know the monadi, Ya Ahl al Jannah. And Allah will command that the caller will call. Ya Ahl al Jannah. O people of paradise. And the people of paradise will look at the direction of the call. Why are the rune? Why are the rune? And the caller will say, How to Arifuna Haba? Do you know this? Can you recognize this? And the people of Al Jannah will say, Now we can recognize this is death. We have come across it before. Yes. That is death. And the same caller will call out to the people of Helfa. Ya Ahlan Nam. All people of Helfa. And the old who will look, all of them, no one of them will be left behind. All of them will see. And they will ask them, Al Ta'arifuna Hada, do you recognize this? And they will say, yes, that is that we recognize it. And in their presence, while they are watching, both the people of Hellfire and the people of Hellfire, while both group of people are watching, they will slaughter death the way you slaughter ram. They will slaughter death the way you slaughter ram. And another call will be made. So my call, Ya Ahl al-Jannah, Khulud, Fala Maud, Wa Ya Ahl al-Nar, Khulud, Fala Maud. And they will make another call. The people, all people of paradise, eternity, there is no death anymore. The people of hellfire, eternity, there is no death anymore. And this is the announcement that we made. The people of hellfire will increase in their joy. And the people of uh, the people of paradise will increase in their joy. And the people of hellfire, hellfire will increase in their grief. Why? Because before this time, they will have been hoping. Somebody continue to suffer punishment every day, every time. No break whatsoever. No break. Each time I come across this description, I try to imagine the least kind of pain that anybody can suffer in this world. I know that our sisters will talk about the pain of childbirth. That there is nothing that is comparable to it. We men, we don't know the pain of childbirth. But me, I know the pain of having with look. And I know that it's very painful. I can remember very well that, you know when this small finger, this small finger, when which go catches you there, the kind of pain that you suffer, it is the finger that is sick, you will hear it from your brain. The entire body will feel it, and this thing that small finger will wake you up in the middle of the night, and your heart is like your heart will come from the chest to that finger. That's the way it feels when you have good flu. And imagine that that kind. If you have, if you have it before, you will understand what I'm talking about. You know? Me too. When I somebody, when I was in school, I saw somebody in front of my had good flu. What were in class? The, the person who does close. You know, because the arm, he will raise his head and will say that he has wept because I am not really What kind of weak person is this? Just a small finger that is told me, I am crying and doing like this until when the thing catches me. Then I realize that it, it is, I say, the, man, the person was not, you know, exaggerating. So I imagine that this pain is continuing every day, every minute, every second of your existence. Imagine. No break whatsoever. The people of heaven will be hoping that, okay, at the point in time, death will come and will end everything. Then this one will come now. I said, death is no more. You know, you kind of man, imagine the kind of grief that will be. May Allah save us from hellfire. May Allah not count us among this who enter hellfire. So, this hadith also indicates that hellfire and paradise will remain uh, forever. Now, because I've been told my time is getting, I have only 10 minutes, so I have to rush to the meeting. So the, the next question that we would like to ask is, where is Al-Jannah? If you say it has been 
It is a, it has been created and it exists currently where it is a general located. Let me be, before, before I go into, let me be very clear to you. There is no categorical evidence whatsoever telling us where the gender, you know, um, exists. There are some scholars, sorry, but we have inferences. But they are correct, correct inferences that can be drawn from verses of the Quran, conclusions. Some of the scholars, like Sheikh uh, Waliullah Abdelhanawi, and also you have Sheikh Sadiq Hassan Khan, both of them, they hold, they take the cautious approach. Don't discuss this matter. Don't discuss this matter. There's no need to discuss this matter. You know, wherever Allah will let it be. So, what is your problem? Why do you need to ask where are the next? If you do that, you will see it's going to enter it. So, that is their own position. But some of the scholars says there is no need for that portion because there are sufficient evidences to make us conclude that al is located somewhere. And they brought some of those evidences. Number one, one of those is the hadith of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Rasul said, فَإِذَا سَعَلْتُمُ اللَّهِ فَاسْأَلُوهُ الْفِرْدَوْسِ Whenever you are going to ask Allah of anything, ask Him for Firdaus. Ask Him for Al Firdaus. For in the who our Sultan Jannah. Because it is the middle part or the highest point of Al Jannah. Our Sultan Jannah wa Al Jannah. It is the middle point and the highest part of Al Jannah. Or our Fogo who Al Shul Rahman. Wa min who? Tafajjaru al-haru al-jannah The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Whenever you are going to ask Allah for anything, ask for your loss Because it is the middle and the highest part of our jannah And above al-arsh, above that firdaus is the arsh of Allah The throne of Allah is the roof of firdaus and from there, that is from Firdaus, that is where the rivers of paradise gush from. The rivers of milk, the rivers of honey, the rivers of wine, all those rivers. It is from Al Firdaus that they are gushing from. And the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the throne of our Rahman is above Firdaus. So based on this, the scholars such as Sheikh Abdul Aziz al Rajahi, they said that based on this evidence, it indicates to us that Al Jannah is in heaven. Al Jannah is in heaven because we know the Arsh of Allah is in heaven. So, this is the argument of some of the scholars. Again, uh, one of our scholars, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Shah al Tamim, he used of the opinion. He also spoke when he was doing the tafsir of the verse of the Quran in Surah Al-Quran chapter 3, 53, verse 14 to 15. When he was doing the tafsir of that verse, in the center of the Muntaha, in the Hajjanat al Ma'wa, said, near center of the Muntaha, near it is the paradise of Abu. Meaning that the paradise is near center of the Muntaha. And he said, center of the Muntaha, that is the, called the Lord tree. There's a, there's a tree in paradise that, you know, um, is above I mean, the, I mean, the seventh heaven. And the tree is so big, it takes thousands of years for a rider to cover its shade. Now, they said that, you know, um, 